cloud. All right, so welcome to another episode of a Frugal Athlete Podcast. Today, we got two very special guests, uh, two very close friends that came up together, and uh, they're both doing uh, great things in their respective spaces. Uh, so we got Zach Pfeffer and Russell Canoes. How are you guys doing today? Doing well. Thanks for having us on, Bobby. Doing good, man. Thank you so much. Uh, most definitely. So um, let's take it back, you know, so I was playing for Philadelphia at the time and they always kept, kept talking about these two young kids that, you know, were both from the same area, uh, both doing amazing things at their at their level. And then next thing you know, they're both in Germany. So, you know, I don't want to tell you guys this whole story, but if you guys can give a brief intro, uh, I know, Zach, you've been on the podcast before, but Russell, you know, we've talked quite a bit, but this is your first time. So introduce yourselves for the audience that may not know who you are, who you guys are. Go ahead, Zach. Cool. I'll kick us off. Yeah. So uh, Zach Pfeffer uh, was a formerly a six-year professional soccer player in Major League Soccer. Uh, spent most of my career uh, with the Philadelphia Union. A decent amount of time was that. A decent amount of time of that was with uh, Moby. And uh, spent a year playing in Germany while uh, on loan from the Union in 2013 with um, TSG 1899 Hoffenheim of the Bundesliga and. We'll talk about it more, but I was there with with Russ for a, a good period of time uh, and then finished out my career in 2016 with the Colorado Rapids out in Denver. And uh, at the ripe old age of 22, decided it was time to hang up my boots and, and mm -hmm. retire and, and move on to the next chapter. So following uh, the playing career in MLS, I went back to Temple University to finish off my undergraduate degree in finance. Uh, did a couple of internships, did an internship at Goldman in the investment banking division covering the global industrial space. I uh, went back full time, was, was there for about 16 months or so. And uh, recently in October of last year, ventured into the, uh, the private equity world with Bright Star Capital Partners. So that's where I'm at right now. Amazing. How old are you, Zach? I'm 26 now. 26. <laughs> I'll, I'll be turning 26 this year too. Uh, Russell Knaus here. I'm originally from Lancaster, PA. Zach and I grew up 45 minutes from each other, um, but I am currently playing for DC United in Major League Soccer, um, but I was in Germany at 15 years old, uh, playing for TSG Hoffenheim, as Zach said, and was I spent six and a half years in Germany, five and a half of the years were at Hoffenheim in the academy uh, reserve team and then first team, and then I signed uh, my first pro deal, and then I was put on loan to um, Bochum in the second Bundesliga spent a year there. And then, uh, when I turned 22, that's when I decided to, uh, make the move back to major league soccer. So I'm 25 turning 26 this year. I've been with DC United for three and a half years now. So. No, oh, it's amazing. And, you know, if you're listening, these are two young gentlemen that are, you know, mature beyond their years. You know, I know Zach's a professional when he says finances, finance, <laughs> and, uh, and, and Russell, you know, leave, leaving your, you know, Lancaster at the age of 15, you know, that's no small feat. So can you guys both talk about, you know, being young professionals, you know, Zach went pro at 16, uh, Russell, you moved overseas at 15. So talk about that dynamic. And, you know, a lot of athletes, specifically soccer players are, you know, going pro at a younger age. What does it take to make it to that next level at that, that age? Russ, why don't you kick us off this time? Yeah, um, I mean, I think there was obviously lots of sacrifice that went into it. I always talk about, you know, obviously soccer is growing within this country, but um, every kid's path to first team or professional level is is different. You know, obviously the path signing here within the U.S. and, and moving abroad is possible now. Signing abroad and, you know, making it overseas is also, you know, a pathway to success. But for me, it was a lot of sacrifice. It was difficult. Um Zach and I actually, we spent some time in Florida when we were 14 years old with the U-17 uh, U.S. national team down at the IMG Academy. You guys were at residency too, Yeah, right? you, yeah. you spent time there too, right? Maybe. Yeah. Yeah, so that, for me personally, that was a, a warm-up for then moving to Germany. Um, spent about a year away from my family. I, I was six months, I believe, at high school, and then I left to go to the residency program. Um, so I always say that was kind of a warm up for Germany and kind of got me uh, used to being away from family. But it, it takes a lot of sacrifice. It, you know, made me mature a lot faster um, mm -hmm. trying to figure out things in a new country, new language for me personally was was not always easy. But um, I think being able to adapt 
in those situations really helped me succeed and and follow follow the pathway. No, that's amazing. Yeah, and I mean, you know, look from my end, obviously, I, I signed with uh, the union as, as the first homegrown right before my 16th birthday, and kind of similar to Russ, there's a lot of sacrifice involved. There's a lot of uh, you know well thought out decisions that need to be made at such a young age, and I come from you know very as does Russell, very uh, well educated family. Everyone went to school as as higher degrees, and so education was always extremely important to our, to our family. And so a big decision, of course, was as parents, you know, my, my parents said, do we let Zach turn professional and potentially have this unorthodox academic uh, path throughout high school, through college, but ultimately at such a young age and having really since I was three years old dreamed of playing professionally, it was an opportunity that I couldn't pass up. And honestly, simply that my, my parents couldn't say no to as well. Um, so Obviously, joining the union at, at a young age, I was, it's funny because if I look back at pictures, then I was maybe, you know, 5'8", 130 pounds soaking wet. So it looked like I was 12 years old. And uh, I think just having the experience of getting thrust into the professional world, into a man's world at such a young age, paid huge dividends for me, really allowed me to grow up, to mature, to become much more independent. And then, you know, you fast forward to living over in Germany with, with Russ and, and the two of us being on our own. Um, at such a young age, being uh, you know thrown into a new culture, learning a new language, uh, and then after I came back from Germany, you know moved out and into my own apartment in Philly. So all of those things, uh, you know, outside of the soccer field, I think people don't necessarily realize are, are pretty difficult, uh, especially at a young age. But I uh, really had some amazing experiences, and I know for me personally, has uh, kind of made me who I am today and helped me get to where I am now. No, most definitely. I always tell people like I want to change residency for like for anything, you know, talk about, you know, leaving at a young age and people was like, well, I wouldn't do that for my kid. But you 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 grow in so many ways that you can't even imagine. So um, I want you guys to talk about that season where you guys spent together. You know, obviously you guys played against each other growing up, played with each other growing up, youth national teams. Um, but a year in Germany together, what was that like? How did you guys help each other? And, you know, how important was it to have like a someone familiar you know with you as you guys are trying to reach your professional goals yeah it was um I just I mean going back to even further like Zach and I when did we get to know each other Zach probably like 10 11 years old like maybe 11 ODP years old trying team. ODP for Pennsylvania state team yep. that was and then you go through the regional team national yep. team so it's I mean we always were really close like I remember going up spending time at your cabin and you know training in the basement and doing all those things right it was it was awesome and then obviously it was almost like it felt like it was supposed to happen that way where Zach was on Philadelphia Union they started to develop a relationship with the clubs Hoffenheim and Union started to develop a relationship and obviously Zach was uh was an awesome talent um player young player that was interested for Hoffenheim to bring over and um, it worked out. I was there obviously moving my way a different route, but similar, we were at the similar stages in our career and it was awesome being able to kind of rekindle what we had when we were younger and then being in Germany together. Um, we ended up, did we start out? Um, we got a, a apartment together, right? But did you live in the Academy building? Yeah. First, for the first time, right? First couple of months. Yeah. I was in the Academy and then we yeah. had an apartment. So at Hoffenheim, they have like a 12, I think 12 to 14 room, like academy building fields outside chef, uh, chefs, someone to watch over, like all the offices are there, um, gym down there. So we had our rooms there on site for the first couple of months. I stayed there longer. Um, but once Zach came over and he kind of felt comfortable, then we got our apartment in, in a place called Sinsheim. Hoffenheim actually is a village of like, there's more cows than people there. It's probably had <laughs> 50, 50 people population there. Um, and it takes you like three minutes to drive through the village of Hoffenheim. But we got the, we got an apartment in Sinsheim and um, it was awesome being able to kind of experience the culture together. You know, I remember dragging up groceries up the hill, like, cause we didn't have our car yet. Um, yeah. It was great. Cause we all had, we had the same mindset the whole, yeah. the whole time, you know, we were there to support each other. We were best friends along on the journey too, which made it that more amazing. Yeah, I mean, I would, I won't be too repetitive. I mean, just to echo the same thing. I think it's funny when you look at us coming together at, at 10, 11 years old, playing on the, the state team for ODP, playing against each other uh, at, at the club level. 
But I think also too, what was interesting is both Russell and, and myself were one of maybe five or six guys in our age group where we were in the 1995 age group for the national team, really one of maybe five or six guys that went to almost every single camp from the U14 age all the way up to essentially the U20, U23 national team. So not only did we play ODP together, play against each other at the club level, live together in Germany, but we also uh, you know, had an opportunity to represent the country together for you know six, seven years or whatever it was. Um, so it was, it was pretty special, but I mean, living over in Germany, you know, the, the only thing I guess that I would add that Russell didn't is he obviously was there much, uh, much longer than I was and was there before me. So from my perspective, going over there was a huge help to have him. And he knew the ropes, he knew the language, he knew kind of just the culture at Hoffenheim at the, at the club itself. And so that made my transition multiples uh, easier versus what it, it, it otherwise probably would have been. Uh, and you guys mentioned both you guys are, you know, come from well-educated backgrounds. Your parents are, both your parents are, you know, big on education. So describe the school situation. Cause I know Zach, when you're in Philly, you were doing the homeschool or actually going to school after practice and stuff like that. Uh, Russell, I'm sure you had to learn German, you know, not only in the school setting, but also on the field. Um, what was that school situation like for you guys? Yeah, okay. So uh, for it was de definitely different, um, very unique. So when I was in high school, again, I signed it, I think it was my sophomore year. And so the, the agreement that I came to that my parents came to with the school was because I still wanted to graduate from my school walk with my class. And so I would uh, go I was trying to go to prom with that one girl you kept telling me about back in the day. <laughs> no, I tried funny. to go to all the school dances. Yeah, I tried to be as involved as I could. So um, I, I went into first period, I, I think when I had math class or at home room and math class. So I did that for uh, you know an hour, hour and a half in the morning. And then I still, it's funny, like Moby, you remember, I, I couldn't drive at first. So yeah. I had my mom pick me up from school. She would drive me down to the stadium and uh, did training, did that, that whole, uh, that whole work. And then uh, in the afternoon, I'd go back home and finish the rest of my courses online. And so I did that for, uh, for the rest of my high school career. And then once I transitioned into taking classes, um, at university, I went to Penn State World Campus. So I took classes there and I actually had a little space in between when I graduated high school, because then that's after, uh, or I guess while I was still in Germany, that's when I graduated from high school um, during the summer when I came home. So while I was in Germany, I had a little break uh, before I started those college classes. And Russell had learned a bunch of the language before me. And Russ, you weren't in a, you were never in a class, right? No, I took the easiest German class so I could to spend more time with my other classes yeah and for, for that me, was already when I went there, that oh. yeah for, for the club to to kind of help me acclimate adjust learn the language I actually went to a, a German language school five days a week in since time it was 8 a.m to, to, to 12 p.m noon I would go sometimes uh, with you that yeah so it was, it was four hours a day just strictly learning the German language reading writing listening etc Zach's uh, German we, was very good for the amount of time he was there it was, oh, okay. it was a huge help. I mean, still to this day, I'm, I'm trying to, to stay up with the language as much as I can. Whether I, I'm on Duolingo all the time. So, uh, yeah. You know, for me, uh, German is still great, too. Yeah, it's been good because since I've been back with D.C., I've been able to always have someone in the team to speak German to. So it's been pretty nice. Stieber, Boucher, like uh, Gressel now. Um, there's been other guys, too. But um, – Going back to the schooling part, I had, I spent two and a half years of my high school in Germany um, and I was going to an international school. So luckily I didn't have to like learn subjects in German. I was able to uh, speak English in all my classes and then just have a, a German class there specifically for that. Um, but it was very tough. I look back and I don't, I honestly don't know how I did it because it was two and a half years of five days a week like wake up at, um, you know, we have Tuesday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Tuesday, Thursdays were like our double days. Mm -hmm. So I, we'd wake up seven o'clock, go work out. You know, I remember running through the forest, like, and then we'd run back down the hill. I'd go and shower, eat breakfast, and then hop on the train at eight, get to school a little bit later than, you know, when it started. Cause it took me about 45 minute train ride to Heidelberg. Um, get there, uh, obviously have school to three o'clock, then hop on the train back four o'clock train, eat dinner or train, shower, eat dinner, homework, go to bed. That was my day. Shower, 
Yeah, sh- <laughs> yeah, exactly. You want to make sure to in the there. shower. Somewhere in there was a shower, I guess. But um, that was my day for two and a half years. I look back and I'm like, geez, I started studying like six months out for like my finals just so I had enough time to be able to like do well on them. Um, and funny story, my my graduating class was um, I think nine or ten people. I think it was only <laughs> ten people. So I didn't really have a normal high school experience. Zach did not either, but mine was even worse. I like, we didn't have any, any homecoming, no dance, nothing. It was, you know, when I'd come home for summer break, I'd look forward to that because I could see all my buddies, but um, those were the type of sacrifices that I, you know, I was willing to do. And honestly, when I was in the moment, I didn't even think twice about it. I was so focused on becoming a professional that Uh that was totally okay with me having that my, I could have done that schedule for four to five years more if I knew I was going to make it professional. Oh, and I, I appreciate you guys both sharing that because it's, it's, it's a testament to why you guys are successful, not only in your careers, but off the field as well, you know, and if we fast forward, you know, you guys at 22 years old, you guys both made pivotal decisions or 22, 23, um, that time frame. you know, Russell, you decided to come back to the States playing MLS, and Zach, you decided to, you know, be done and go into, you know, go back to school full time, and then eventually lead you to private equity. So talk about those decisions, um, you know, why you guys did that, and then we can move on to some of the things that you guys are doing off the field. Yeah, I just, I'll I'll start. I just want to say, like, it's almost become like a lifestyle like the way that the amount of work we had to put in to become professional athletes it just trans for me at least it transitions into the other things I'm passionate about which obviously we'll touch on but you know I I get a lot out of my days because obviously you know my priority is always soccer and it always Mm -hmm. will be while I'm playing but at the same time a lot of people don't understand how much time we actually have when we're recovering a lot of the downtime in the afternoons and stuff. So I don't really just like to sit there and waste my time. And, you know, some of the things I'm passionate about are, you know, a little bit business endeavors or, you know, stuff like that, that that's interests me finance. Zach and I've talked hours about stocks and all these different things. Right. And that's obviously the path that he's gone down. Um, But I think that lifestyle and that grind has just kind of become, you know, my the way I live my life sometimes I have to almost catch myself and say hey like slow down because I just want to keep getting things done and just keep checking them off the list um but I don't know Zach you want to touch any on on that yeah no I mean look from from the the day that I retired I went back to school it was the same type of mindset and I think as professional athletes all three of us we we know what it's like and it's one thing to play a sport in high school, even in college, but another to kind of play at the professional level and, and understand what that's like. And so I think for me, that's helped tremendously in, in my transition as I entered the business and the finance world, um, not only in interviewing for firms like Goldman and, and for Brightstar, but just in terms of actually doing the work and kind of the, the motivation and the dedication to do what I do, do it well, and, and try to be the best. And so I took the kind of tunnel vision, the, I call it the myopia that I had of the world, which was focused on soccer. And I put a hundred percent of that focus and effort into the next chapter of my life. And so that's the way I've always approached it. And, uh, you know, so far it's been, it's been a great transition and and hopefully that continues. No, respect. I I really appreciate you guys sharing because, you know, a lot of the skills that we do learn from soccer easily translate to whether it's entrepreneurship, corporate business, um, whatever we do. And like, we, we do have to understand, like, we're in a good place, you know, you guys only 26 years old and, you know, to accomplish what you guys have accomplished, you know, is no small feat. So like Russell said, sometimes we just got to sit back and sometimes slow down. Um, But with that being said, let's, let's, let's dive into it a little bit. So uh, Russell, you know, you're like the real estate guru. You do some entrepreneurship stuff with the, you know, Amazon and uh, Zach, you know, the, I always say, Zach, when you start your fund, let me know. I'm going to I'm gonna save up so I could, you know, be one of, your, one of the LPs or something. Um, so talk about some of you guys' endeavors and uh, like, let's really dive into it. Yeah, I mean, I, I can start, you know, just I, I started uh, obviously in my career at, at Goldman Sachs and I was doing investment banking and, and really, I guess, kind of just to educate maybe some of the, the people who would be listening who don't know as much about investment banking, kind of at its core to simplify it as much as possible. 
you're, you're an advisor to, to companies strategically related to mergers, acquisitions, capital raising initiatives, whether that's debt, equity. And so I was able to uh, get a tremendous experience at Goldman working with, you know, some of the biggest companies uh, around the world that, that you know of uh, in the industrial space and got a lot of experience uh, with the, with the M&A process and understanding kind of how that, how that works, how businesses operate, you dig down and, and really understand at a, at a granular level, kind of how these businesses operate and what the lifeblood um, of those businesses is. So um, had a tremendous experience and really kind of prepared me for the move into private equity. And, um, you know, with Brightstar, we're a middle market focused private equity firm in New York and kind of our, our core focus and expertise is with family, family owned, closely held and entrepreneur led businesses. And, um, you know, it's when you look at the private equity space, you put your investor hat on and it's in, in essence, working with a, you know, a pool of capital to, to deploy and, and acquire companies to, to help create value. And so we're working with, uh, you know, businesses of all types, finding ways to, to partner with their management teams and, and find ways to, to grow the businesses to ultimately, you know, realize returns for everyone involved. Let's real quick on the difference between private equity, hedge fund, venture capital, because, you know, we see a lot of athletes getting into the venture capital space, um, but there's, you know, many different ways to invest. So give us like a quick one-on-one on you know why private equity is different from venture capital, different from hedge fund, different from all these different um, other um, alternative investments. Yeah, so you know maybe give like a bullet on each one. So again, mm -hmm. you can think of investment banking as kind of more the advisory side, helping companies through the merger and acquisition process, helping companies raise capital via the equity and the debt markets for various reasons. Uh, and then when you go into kind of private equity or venture capital, growth equity, that's more of you putting kind of your investor hat on and, and actually deploying in the capital. Um, so in, in private equity, you know, you could think of it uh, maybe as dealing with, uh, you know, more, more uh, established companies, uh, recurring cash flow type of companies, um, where venture capital obviously is much earlier stage startup type companies that, that need seed capital to, to grow. Um, and then when you look at kind of the hedge fund space, it's obviously the public market. So you're dealing with buying and selling stocks. Um, and so those are kind of all the different aspects of those various avenues. A lot of similarities, a lot of differences. Um, and I think it just shows you too as well for people who are interested in going into the, the world of, of finance. You know, there, there's a lot of opportunity and it's a, it's a clearly exciting space. I uh, appreciate that. And Russell, I mean, I mean, you're doing a lot of bif different things. I know we've talked offline uh, quite a bit. So give us a rundown of like the wonderful things you're doing. Yeah, I was just uh, kind of in a trance there trying to listen to Zach. <laughs> All that stuff he's saying, man. I wrote some notes down. <laughs> I know, man. He can educate a lot of people. A lot of people yeah. should hit Zach up. Um, oh, definitely. No, for me, I, I had a passion for, I'll just touch on the real estate one, because that's the one I'm really focused on, on growing. Um, and the one I'm like, I'm excited about for the future. But um, in April 2019, um, I went out and got my real estate license. I was actually, it's a funny story. I was training two kids, um, trying to do a side hustle, you know, yeah. off season, making some money on the side, you know, using my connections. And the person I ran into, um, was an actually him and him and his wife, his wife was a team leader at a Keller Williams office. And he was uh, one of the business coaches, right. Would coach all the agents to be more profitable. Um, and we, we hit it off. I mean, obviously I, I had a great time training his son, but from the business side, that, that real estate piece always interested me. And it almost felt like it was meant to be that I was there training his kids. And obviously one thing led to another. And then I ended up, uh, you know, taking the course online, going and get my license. Um, I never went and finished my college degree. So to me, this was something at least I could have as a backup plan, um, but also use during my career uh, for my personal situation, which I did obviously this off season in purchasing my home. I negotiated the deal myself and, and uh, went through the whole, the whole real estate buying process which was pretty cool. Um, you saved a little bit without using somebody. Saved huh? a little bit. Yep. <laughs> on that side. And, and, you know, then on top of that, I, you know, my wife and I, we planned out the full renovation process, which has been an awesome experience that we've gone through together, um, which I'd like to then build and, and do on the investment side as well. But um, you know, I, I, this off season and actually 12 months ago, you know, I met kind of the guy who was, his name's Jordan Stewart um he was master uh, connector yeah so he, 
it's all about networking, right? You want to, I think it's really important that us as athletes, we can use our, our platform now, you know, to reach out and whether it's companies, individuals, like just learning, educating yourself, it doesn't have to be, you know, reaching out to make money, you know, it's, it's literally just to educate yourself and kind of see how things, you know, if something interests you reach out to someone you, you know, you're following or you you're inspired by. Um, and that's kind of, um, how I got, I got into real estate by creating a relationship and then it growing from there, not really knowing what it was going to be or what it would turn into, but it was great to have that relationship and build a friend. And then on top of that, it turns into, you know, some type of business, right. A business that we're passionate about. Um, going back to 12 months ago, I uh, met Jordan Stewart, who was, he was handling a couple of guys in the team, kind of our team realtor. And I obviously had my license and would work with a few guys in the team as well, but we ended up uh, partnering together. We, we thought it, it made sense. Um, so now I'm working with next move. Uh, next move is, is uh, there's two situations next move. There's locally in D in the DMV, DC, Maryland, Virginia area. So that's obviously Jordan and the next move team uh, next move nation's capital, which supports all the, all the um, people within this DMV area. And then he also has the next move network, which is agents, top agents across the country that, you know, help within the sports and entertainment industry. And I'm looking to help that obviously pivot into major league soccer and then Jordan's local as well. So we can work together to build, build it here. And we're doing some special things with DC United um, official real estate partner of DC United now. So there's lots going on on that front, um, exciting things, but it all came down from one relationship, which was with, um, his name's Eric Quadros and we, it was literally training two kids. So it's, it's cool. It's a cool story to see how one, one relationship can kind of build, be building blocks, um, and create a pathway. Uh, I like that you said that because with that, you know, it comes reputation, you know, we have a unique opportunity, you know, both on and off the field to make these, you know, relationships, but the reputation, you know, you had, you did a good job with, you know, his kids, which led to, you know, connecting with the parents and doing, you know, leading to Jordan. And now you're, you know, growing your business with Zach. I know you mentioned your mentor, you know, Steve Graham, one of the, who's a big time player in the Philadelphia area, you know, it comes with, you know, your reputation, you know, not only on the field, but off the field. So when it comes to building these relationships and networking, uh, your reputation matters and your reputation can take you a long way. Um, and, and Moby, absolutely. real quick, you know, I would just add, because I don't think you could ever talk about it enough and you could have a five hour podcast on it, but just in terms of building relationships and I think Moby, you're, you're one of the best at it as well, but Russell just talked a lot about it. I know at Brightstar, that's what we preach is building relationships and there's, there's nothing more important. I mean, it doesn't matter what industry, what trade building relationships is at the core of, of what life and business is all about. So, you know, for all those athletes who, who are tuning in here, who read all the articles and the information that you put out, it's immensely important. And it, while you're playing too, while you have that brand, you have the recognition, it's so important to leverage that and, and build those relationships while you can. Uh, exactly. So uh, with that, obviously, I mean, you guys, let's, let's take it back. Cause you guys are making money at a young age, you know, 16, 17, 18 years old. Uh, obviously, you know, your parents can help you out, but what, where did you guys learn your, like your, you know, your money management, your personal finance skills? I would, I would say, you know, for me at 15, 16, whatever it was, uh, playing professionally, making money, and I was living at home. And so I, I had virtually no expenses. And I had two wonderful parents who are also financially savvy, although they're not in the, in the business or in the industry. And so the advice that I was given was save and invest. And so I, I didn't know much at the time, but I began to invest my money. And once you have money in the market, you have a vested interest. And so I just started to, to follow the, the stocks and the companies that I owned. And I was tuning into CNBC, Bloomberg, read the Wall Street Journal, Barron's, whatever I could get my hands on. And I just wanted to learn. And again, it's what we talked about earlier with just that, that focus, that, that drive. And it's what I had on the field. And it's what I had uh, in every other passion of mine. And that passion was, was finance, was investing. And so I just learned as much as I could, as quickly as I could. And it kind of grew from there. And, you you know, one step leads to another. And uh, you kind of just learn how to go about managing your, your finances that way. Yeah, I think for me, it was pretty similar. Um, my dad always had a good handle on, you know, financial decisions. My mom was really good at budgeting. And I think that translated to me. I always, I'm really every month, 
even like weekly, I'm looking daily, weekly, I'm looking at my budget, just making sure adjusting things, tracking my net worth, like doing all those things like that, that to me helped me grow. Um, now, did I make every single good investment decision? No, I didn't. Zach knows I was pretty risky in certain situations, but I also learned a ton from some of those situations, right? Um, I don't think every single thing in the business world or investment you make is going to be a good one. And people need to understand that, but it's all, it's part of the process. And I think if you're pretty conservative and, and you make the right decisions, like you said, you stick to a budget, you save, you know, you have the ability to then invest that money and, and grow it. And honestly, if for me, the biggest thing is tracking it. If you see the monthly, you know, tracker going up every single month and it kind of is a motivation and, you know, no, lets you know that you're doing something right. And, you know, I think for me personally, I'd rather have that than go out and spend on s stupid things. Right. I'd rather make decisions uh, and have more control and, and financial freedom, which is all the great things you talk about and, and preach Moby, which is why I love this podcast. I love everything you're doing with a frugal athlete. Cause I think it translates very, very similar to my life. No, I respect. I appreciate you, you, you guys sharing that. And you know, the, the compliment, um, so what advice would you have for like a young, a young player in the game today? Yeah. I mean, you guys have lived it. You guys are living it. Um, you know, you guys just mentioned like what you guys did, but it's a new landscape now, you know, there's a lot more information out there. Uh, I'm getting texts about NFTs and real estate and crypto. And this was not around when I was coming into the game. So what advice would you guys have for a young player in the game today? Russ is, Russ is the superstar now. He's still playing on the field. So, yeah. Russ, why don't you start? Yeah, I mean, I think uh, – I definitely think you want to leverage your family if it's – if they have, obviously, like Zach's situation, like if, you know, that, to help you make the right decisions. I think you look up to leaders in the team, mentors, um, guys who you kind of see like, hey, they can give me advice. Um, I think you also be careful. I think, obviously, we're pro athletes, so there's a lot of people out there, you know – you know, may sound like a good idea, but it's, it's not always going to be a great idea to invest. You know, if you can be a little bit more conservative, especially the younger guys, um, I think the biggest thing, and you, you can talk about this all the time, but compounding your money, you know, if you're able to start at a younger age, what it can amount to and having a long-term plan. So um, I think those are super important things. We have an opportunity now with soccer growing in this country Um especially the young kids coming into major league soccer, they, there's a ton of money. Um, I don't know if you just, if you saw the CBA, but the minimum is, is going to be up a lot, a lot more in the future. Yeah, I'm jealous. You know? I'm about to change. I'm about to try to make a little comeback. Just change yeah. my age date or something. <laughs> Definitely. But um, you know, it's all, it's it, just have to have a long-term plan and, and making sure making smart financial decisions and educate. Like you said, Moby, there's so much information online now. You have to be careful with that, um, but you can. There's still a ton of good information out there that you can learn from, and I think it's your job as an athlete. You're making money, and you you have this privilege to make money at a young age. You obviously worked hard to get where you're at, but it's a gift, right? And you have to understand, you know what, what to do with that. You know, you don't want to lose it and be and be in a bad spot five years from now. Exactly. Yeah, no, look, I mean, I would, I would give similar advice, I think, you know, for one times on your side. And so for all those young athletes now, everyone's, especially in the US, I think turning professional younger and younger. And so it becomes that much more important to take advantage of the extra years and the opportunity you have where you're making money. And so, as Russell said, there's nothing more powerful than in compounding interest. And also while you're younger, you have an ability to take on a bit more risk than you otherwise would when you're 30, 40, 50 with each year that goes by. Um, you know, that time goes away. So I think investing early, taking advantage of compound, uh, compounding your money, I think having an ability to take a bit uh, more risk when you're younger. But I think most importantly, too, you just need to need to make sure you're you're mindful of kind of what you're spending, how much you're earning. And Russell talked about putting together a budget, which is very important. Um, but then I, I think just as important, if not more so, is surrounding yourself with the right people. And I know when I was at the at the union, Moby, both of us, I think a, a guy who was very helpful, of course, was Brian Carroll. And there's guys like Will Hesmer who played in the league and a lot of these guys who still help a lot of the, the current athletes now. So it's important to go to those who are more senior than you, who have experience, surround yourself with a, a good and trusted group of people. 
Um, and then just, again, to, to try to learn as much as you can, as Russell pointed out, there's a lot of time that all of us have as professional athletes outside of the game. And so as opposed to maybe just if you're sitting at home and you're watching TV, that's great, but maybe take some time as well to, to learn, to educate yourself. And I think Moby, you're, you're the perfect, uh, you know, poster guy for that, um, with everything you've done outside, uh, of, of playing. So that's the advice I would give. And then look, the only other thing I would say, and I think this is really for those who are younger, who haven't even turned, um, professional yet is you, you have to have a backup plan. And I know no one wants to hear that, but it was something that my parents always told me about. And I know same with Russell, but you may be the greatest player on planet earth and either there could be an unlucky situation. You could get injured, whatever it may be. Your career may just not pan out the way you thought it would. And in that case, it's good to, to be able to say, Hey, I have a degree or I'm educated or I know what I want to do next. Um, and so I think it's always important just to keep that in mind. Definitely. No, you guys are spitting facts. And I appreciate you guys coming on. So uh, I know you guys' time is limited, but before I let you go, you guys, you, you guys both touched on it time. You know, Russell, you spent, you know, your downtime, your free time to get your, you know, your your real estate license. And now you've built, you know, a business that you work synonymous with your career. Zach, you know, we, when we keep in touch, you know, I remember you going to business school. Next thing you know, you're at Goldman Sachs. Next thing you know, you're at Bright Star. And that was only within two, three year period. So we have all this time, but we don't think of it, you know, as it goes on. You know, I, I remember my rookie year now, 10 plus years in the game. So we have this time, but it goes by quicker than we think. So we got to take advantage of it and talk about, you know, other ways people can take care of, uh, advantage of their time and resources, you know, that you use. You know, Zach, you mentioned Barron's and Wall Street and CNBC. Um, Russell, I know you got a couple in your Rolodex as well. So just touch on it and then, uh, you know, I'll let you guys go. Yeah, for me, uh, and this is actually, I think, something I even learned more so and the importance of it during uh, COVID. Obviously, we weren't, we didn't have a season. I kind of was having to find the motivation to go train on my own and making sure I'm staying committed without a return date, right? Like yeah. we, we had the first two games of the year, March of last year, and we, and then it stopped. We didn't know when, when we were going to come back. Um, so when I talk about time, I think of, I think of time blocking. And that for me has been the biggest, you know, I'll say, learning experience of uh of 2020 and just I did it before but I didn't do it to the extent I'm doing now you know mm -hmm. planning out my week planning out every single day marking down my calendar you know what what I'm doing this part of the day you know obviously I have now during the season I have you know from 8 a.m to one o'clock is is definitely booked because that's my soccer but what are the things I'm fitting in after the after the day uh you know the morning part to have the most success and most impact on my day. And I think that's been, for me, time blocking is key. So if anybody doesn't feel like they're achieving as much as they want, or they want to be achieving more within their business, within their education, within their profession, whatever it is, you have to add that piece into your, you know, into your plan. Oh, that's a big one. Um, I, that's something I've added over the years, and it's been a game changer. Uh, Brandon Marshall, fellow uh, football player, said it best. If it doesn't get scheduled, it doesn't get done. And yep. it could be like an hour a day. Like it doesn't have to be, you know, five hours a day, like 15 minutes. You know, we use compound interest for money. We can use it for, you know, working as well. So just wanted to point that out. And thank you, Russell. All right, Zach, what you got? Um, yeah, no, just I, I think I would echo the same things on on the finance side. It's obviously using time to your benefit in terms of compounding your money and your investments. Um, and then outside of that, I think it's as a professional athlete, as a collegiate athlete, when you're outside of the classroom and you're outside uh, of training and games, it's maximizing the time you have. Obviously, of course, we, we all want to live our lives and you want to take time for yourself to be with your family, your friends. Um, but it's also trying to take time to, to learn, to educate yourself, to find uh, different passions that can supplement um, kind of what you're, you're doing on the field or in your business. So I think it's immensely important. Time is kind of the greatest asset that um, we all have. And it goes by very, very quickly, unfortunately. So it's trying to, to maximize that. Um, from all aspects of your life. Oh, that's what it's all about. I really appreciate you guys taking the time. Before I let you leave, I lied. One last question. One book recommendation that you guys would recommend? I think normally I, I could give a finance book, but I'm going to say Shoe Dog. Oh, story okay. of, Phil, of Phil Knight and, and Nike. Unbelievable read. Okay. 
I'll give you a real estate uh, Gary Keller book, The One Thing. Okay. I like that. Both yeah. books are amazing. I've read both of them. Um, so I appreciate you guys sharing. I'm and, not a uh, big reader either, but I did read The One Thing. And <laughs> I think that's, that is exactly what I'm talking about, time blocking. In there, it's a huge importance. So there's a lot more other tips in there too. Yeah, so that's it for the podcast today. I'd like to thank Zach and Russell for coming on. A lot of gems. You know, we got to learn about their story, got to learn about what they're doing, not only on the field, off the field. You know, Zach, um, not many people have a six-year career and still have time um, to be um, where they're at and before 30. So that's amazing. And then Russell, he's, you know, he's killing it. He's being humble today. Uh, but he's doing a lot of great things uh, both on and off the field. So um, like we do now, we do our little quick um, takeaways um, time, you know, take advantage of your time, you know, not only from a compound interest standpoint, but, you know, um, with what you do off the field, um, obviously budgeting and, you know, just investing in the resources that you have. So um, that's really important as well. And then last one, uh, last but not least, I think it's, it's really important is, um, and how can I say it in a good way? Um, relationships, you know, um, relationships can take you far and, you know, it may not be like a, a finance tip, but at the end of the day, it is because, you know, you are, you are who you surround yourself with. And, um, as an athlete, you're able to get in a lot of doors, um, but your reputation matters. So, uh, Zach and Russell are both, you know, excellent, you know, athletes or business people that have done that and will continue to do that. So make sure you check them out. We're going to have their show notes um, in the description. And uh, once again, thank you guys for coming on. Thank you. Thanks, Bob.